Uh, we've actually had some really significant price action happen over the weekend, and there is now some hope for the bulls. The price may go up, maybe test the 30k, maybe even reach this 33k level, and a lot of trade opportunities are going to come with that. So let's talk about this. Start with a clean chart. Remember, the biggest, most important levels that we're looking at right now, firstly, are going to be 25k over here. Now, why is the 25k level important? I've spoken about it so much that I didn't go into detail on the last video. And um, let's break this down one more time. So if you take a look right now, I'm outlining key structural levels. This is a series of lower highs and lower lows that formed the market structure that resulted in this downtrend from uh, about mid-November all the way down to a bottom around <laughs> exactly one year, so the next November. Then price started to reverse and go up. Now, we had two big levels, well, three if you're going really low time frames. First, we claimed this level here, price compressed, went sideways, broke. Then we got this minor level here, which was this first major shift in structure where we broke a previous lower high. So uh, let me show you a similar example of why we were waiting for not the 20K level, but the 25K level specifically. Uh, because here, look, we've got the 43K level over here. Or if you wanna go really high, you can go up to say the 45K level. Um, price formed a low here. Let's even zoom in on this. So price comes down and let's mark out every level and then creates this here. And if we take a look at the price action, this chart now, right now looks like a continuation of the downtrend. And we've got two series, so high, lower high, lower high. And then what happens if you watch is the price actually makes one big attempt at this 46K level, completely fails, completely rejected. Then again, it goes for its next attempt, this time it actually breaks it. And this is the one week. So if we go down to the one day, there's a fair bit of confirmation here that look, we've gone above this level, we've really broken above. Uh, that's why for reversals, I normally like to see two structural levels broken back to back. When you get one like this, it's very often that the price just comes straight back down afterwards and you end up with a structure like this. So if we go to present day now, you'll see why I was cautious when we first broke this 20K level here, because we could have very easily gone up and then rejected off of here and come straight back down. However, when we broke this 25K level, we now not only broke this level, but we also established our own short-term structure that's pretty bullish. So that looks really nice. That's a structural shift here. And what I thought might be happening, um, actually just last Friday, this here, this level breaking would result in us coming down and testing this 25K level. And you guys know, I like to trade at key levels, significant levels where big shifts happen. That's where most of the money is. And you can see we've got a clean break below on the daily price closed, and it looks like it wants to continue. However, we got a good bounce. And if you remember, I was speaking about this being a high risk accumulation zone. Now, uh, let's spend a second to talk about what a high risk accumulation zone is. Uh, that is when we've broken a level and we've got a potential breakdown forming. So level break, potential breakdown forming over here, but we have a soft level over here. So one area, one data point, not much telling us that there might be some level of supply that's yet to be touched or demand in this case. Buyers previously stepped in over here, so they might do it again. That's why I call this the high risk. This is where I come in with low size. This is where I double down on the size. It's a misconception that you can't enter a position and then enter again when you get more data confirming that it's going to do exactly what you think it's going to do. But we're traders. If we're wrong, we take the loss and we move on to the next trade. Luckily, again, as I said on the last call, I've been quite ill. So um, I haven't been able to actively trade the markets. My mindset is not in the right place. And until I'm recovered, I won't be entering again. However, I still like to watch the markets, to journal and not lose my touch on the markets. Because when I leave the markets for too long, I feel completely out of sync. And it takes me longer than I'd like to get back into trading. But this is a trade I'm upset for having missed. Right here, beautiful breakup. Now, why is this a breakout play I don't like and this a breakout play I do like? Uh, and to see the difference between the two, I want you to take a look at the chart to the left. When we break out here, we're dealing with all of this potential resistance. When we break out here, we're not dealing with any of this recent resistance. 
And the first levels we see are over here at about 28K. And that's actually the level we end up hitting. So this gives me a clear target that I'm trying to hit. It gives me clear level that's going to be the breakout. And if you were to take this trade here, would have done so on the one hour. Actually, to be completely fair, I wouldn't have taken this trade because technically it was on a weekend and I know I don't do well on weekends, but I think you guys can still learn from the idea of how to have taken a breakout like this. You wait till the level break here. You have your clear target over there and then you pick your invalidation. So say you get it on the first candle close over here. You can set your invalidation down here at this structural level, or you could set it at the top. I'd set it at the top because these sorts of plays tend to be really fast. And then you target somewhere around there. Perfect to our play. These are my favorite plays. Identify key level, look for good ratios. Um, the ratios come from a clear target and a clear invalidation. You don't just randomly pick profit and loss and boom, you've got yourself a fantastic play. And that's what happened. So enough about the past. Let's now talk about the future and the plays we're looking to make. Remember I said on the high time frame that 25K is one key level and then the other key level is 30K. Now the same principles I told you guys before, the space to the side apply here. Similarly, look at this structural breakout here has very recent resistance. Now this breakout here, look at all this empty space. That means very little recent price action that means we've got a lot more room to run if we get above this breakout here. I'd go as far as to say something like 45K would not be odd price action at all. Now, please don't go quote me, Karush said it's going to 45K, I should all in. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. There's several other levels you could potentially put on here, just least of all the 100 week moving average. But what I am saying is that this would not be a weird, unhealthy chart if we got a nice breakout from here and started working our way up to get a test here and then come back down. Like that does not look like weird price action to me and I'm prepared to play it. However, I'll be playing it on the lower time frames, level to level as I've shown you guys. So recent one day right now, our next beautiful play is going to be this over here. I'd love to catch from 28K to 30K. There'll be a lot of beautiful scalps to happen. Now for that, I'll be paying attention to this retracement of this move here. So we've just gone up and we've got the free 82 confluent with 27.5K. And right now the price is actually bouncing at the 236 level. If we bounce from this 236 level, that's already bullish for me. And then we break out here, that's a potential serious size position. Well, we've got multiple confluent factors telling us to go long. Notice I added the moving averages again. Not only do we have a clean bounce from the 100 day moving average, which has repeatedly acted as a key level, Price has always reacted quite heavily in the opposite direction to this. This would be an abnormally small move if all we do is just bounce here and it's left at that. So this long opportunity and betting on potential continuation of this trend over here is my next favorite play. And I'll even add one more argument. Remember candlestick analysis. Look at the size of this bullish candle here. It is bigger than almost every single other bearish candle for the last week. This is one of the most significant ones and its relative size is extremely large. This is another reason that we could be looking at continuation here past this key level at around the 28K. So zooming out to the one day, let's polish off this level. 28.5K would be much closer to the mark and what we're looking for. And then to find the exact breakout level, ideally, I wanna see this price action go sideways for a bit and give us a nice range high and range low. So I'll pay attention to where the price tends to resist from, how it unfolds, and then if we get a clean break out, I'll look for an entry, at least paper trading for now until I'm well enough to trade properly again. So yeah, that's everything I'm looking at right now. Good luck in the markets. This has been a very interesting weekend.